It's Monday morning. This video you're about to watch is going to be the start of a multiple part series of um, the car we're going to collect. Now I've already uploaded one video showing this vehicle, but today is the day we actually go and pick it up. Now, as you can see from the front now, it's actually a 1966 Hillman Imp, and this car has been sat for a very long time. Um, my name is Josh, I run a pre-2000s garage based in East Anglia, um, specialised in a lot of classics and you know Japanese vehicles and also American trucks. A lot of the vehicles do come back lowered but the, the vehicle that we're going to check out today, that's probably not going to get lowered as, as long as my instincts don't get the better of me. Um, this car's pretty special, so uh, I've loaded up my van. We've got to go collect this car and get it back here today before it gets stolen. And you'll see why it probably could get stolen where it's sat. And there it be, the Hillman Imp. Uh, I've just paid for it. The guys that I'm dealing with have, uh, well, they've just cleared off. They said, you pay for it now, you go get it. Luckily I brought some tools. I'm gonna let myself into this fence, but, um, yeah, got to go get it, unseize the brakes, because it's been sat for a very, very long time. So, yeah, good job I brought some tools with me, really. They literally just cleared off. I said, off you go. So now, I should have wore a high-vis, and it wouldn't look like I'm actually stealing it, but I have actually paid for this car. So, it is what it is. So yeah, this car's been sat since 1981. There's many old boxes and stuff on here. 1981, which means this car was driven for 15 years before it was parked up. And it sat in a garage that was there ever since. So my plan now is to get it all unseized, get the brakes freed off, and then, um, and then just get on the trailer and get it back to the workshop and then I'll talk a little bit more about it but yeah I'm gonna get it going now before it gets too hot uh, and we've got a recovery truck coming I have a van full of tools and an imp to get working it's got lots of old motorcraft boxes all over it there's lots of spare parts all over it in it but the grand scheme of things it looks pretty good So it turns out the brakes aren't even seized. So that's a good sign, that's a good sign. Now, there seems to be a lot of old like filter boxes. And as I'm opening them now, I realize, I believe, they're all used, <laughs> but these are like old motorcraft uh, boxes. Which if you're 400 years old, you'd probably know what this actually means. But in my time, this wasn't really a thing, but oh, there you go. You can actually see that one that's not oil saturated. It's just mental how, I think this one might be new. I don't know. That looks new. Looks like a new seal. Yeah, that's a new filter there. Yeah, that is a new filter. So that's pretty cool. New O-ring and stuff in the bottom of there. Just cool. There's lots of these boxes everywhere. I wish I was here uh, when this car was actually dragged out for the first time. But so the story is, there's a couple of uh, locals around here that lived here the whole time and they remember seeing it once back in the day um, and the guy that had this died like 25 years ago and apparently they started restoring it and uh, nothing ever came of it because there's a little bit of rust on the arch and all these little white patches are like paint where it just painted over the rust back in the day in like the early 80s 
and like 70s. I shoot, I've seen it many times on many other cars that I've pulled out of uh, barns and garages and stuff. They just used to get paint and just paint over rust and thing. Yeah, I sorted it. And then you get like abortions that look like this with just lots of little white dots all over it. Um, not a good look. It's not a good look, but I will, I will finish all that off. Make that all green. I want to polish up the patina on it and make it look just a really nice, honest car. Um, I think it's going to come out really good. It's got that British patina all over it. I don't know what happens, but in the UK, a lot of the British cars, such as this one, you can see lots of brown dots of rust just scattered all over the car. It always happens. It's not in America, they're just sunburned, but in the UK, they do this. They just do this spotty rust spots all over it and I quite like it it's quite cool so, next plan of action pump the tires up and just winch it onto the truck because all the brakes are unseized the engine is seized I believe but um, if you was sat down for 41 42 years you'd probably be pretty rough if you think of your nan right your nan's probably like 78 years old and she's probably a bit sore uh, she just needs a little bit of help to move, doesn't she? So I'm not saying go and WD-40 your nan's knees and armpits and stuff like that, but just just think that the car, as a human, you wouldn't want to move either. So a little bit of persuasion, I think that'll be uh, easy to free up and get work and stuff. Hopefully, the engine runs sweet after that. I know the water pump will be seized. It's a very common problem on the imps. I already ha do have an imp in storage at the minute. It was passed down from my granddad, so that's why I've got a little connection to imps because he was uh, very passionate about them. And uh, I'll pop one up on the screen here. Uh, yeah, he's got a little homing imp van, so yeah. I did actually get that running the drive in a couple of years ago. So I knew a little bit about imps. I'm not like crazy mad about them, but um, when you see an old car like this, it's really hard to pass up, even in the condition it's in. I just didn't want it to go get a banger race or something like that. That's usually what happens. So I'm glad I'm saving it now when I get the chance. So yeah, the car is very cool, very good. It's got a spare rear balance here and I imagine this is what was taken off the car because the one on the back of the car is actually in really good condition. Um, not too sure what this bit is. But that can go in the van as well. It's got some really bad rotten exhaust. I should probably just throw this away, but I'm going to take it anyway. I'll be the kind of gentleman that doesn't leave scrap everywhere. If we've got that spare balance here, that would make sense why this engine mount is not bolted in. Um, yeah, this is the engine. Looks quite complete, obviously. The hoses have uh, <laughs> definitely seen better days. Very common problem. So this is a full aluminium engine head block in the full lock. So it has its corrosion problems when you don't put the right uh, coolant in and stuff. It's cool there. Is that a start button? Or is that a start button? I don't know. But yeah, I've not actually tried to spin the engine over without the belt on. So it's trying to spin the belt and the, and the uh, water pump. But, you know, it looks quite there. It looks all there. Fuel lines, obviously, destroyed. But in the grand scheme of things, it actually looks pretty decent around this car. I'll be honest. It looks really, really good and I'm pleased about it untouched you can hear this is another water pump this one is also seized so that's helpful but i can send that off to be rebuilt because they like a core so send that off as a good core these potentially could be new old stock potentially potentially there's another clock there, or speedo, should I say, and the rear bumper. There's no, oh, there's no overriders like it has on the front. 
for the rear bumper, not that I've found, but I like the overriders and if I can get some for the rear as well, that'd be sweet. Unless they're in a car somewhere, I don't know. There's about 400 rotten exhausts for this car. A bit of an old newspaper here. Friday, May, 1981. <laughs> oh, and a little champion spark plug box. More motor world, motorcraft boxes. Is that, is that a new plug? Car, look. That is not new. <laughs> I love this sort of stuff. This stuff is so exciting. It's just all scrap, realistically, but it's really fun. This stuff might have been on the bonnet for years. Some oil can. Don't need this. But there is a lot of oil cans over here which look like they come out of the same garage. Gunk cleaning solution. Brush it on, rinse it off. I bet that takes your skin off back when they used to make stuff that was good. Spray paint, what's this? Quickest releasing. Ah, I like this stuff. What's this, grease? Grease, it's probably still good. An old battery, that's probably for the imp as well. Brake fluid, I'm gonna take all these little old cans. I feel like they came out of the garage anyway. Hard gloss, oh, that's paint. New top it up washing up liquid. Oh, it's empty. That's a shame. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Duckham's gut junk. That, that Duckham's oil jug. That is so good. That is cool. I wonder if that's the same colour as that. I wonder. Touch up. There's lots of these. I don't think these are worth anything. To be honest, you see these casual oil jugs everywhere. Every single barn find has these. So I don't think they're actually worth anything. All these Duckham's gear oil stuff. Or motor oil. I don't know. Blue Cola. Special antifreeze for the all aluminium engine. That's cool. So the interior of this car has fared very, very well. I think it's gonna clean up absolutely brilliantly. We have more motorcraft. Um, this here, Bedfordshire Building Society. This is probably 1973. This is probably the company that owned all the garages back then, but I, I've already worked with this company before. So worked with I've rented a garage of this company before and it's changed names about 400 times. What I can gather is the company has changed ownership and names so many times that um, they're just not very good at keeping up to date with their uh, direct debits and stuff like that. So this gentleman obviously passed away many years ago and I imagine that they just never followed him up with the payments of the of the garage. When I was growing up, around here, there would be loads of garages that are just open and and like unattended, and people have like bikes in there and stuff like that. And we'd go in there on our bikes and kick footballs in there and stuff like that. So back then, it wasn't really a problem to have a garage unattended and not paid for because they didn't really care. And to be honest, the same stands for it now. I uh. I cancelled my garage a couple of years ago, sent the keys back, eight months later, they messaged me like, oh, you haven't been paying for the garage, I'm like, yeah, so I gave you the keys back. That's why I think this car managed to stay in the garage for as long as it did, unattended and unpaid for, until they're knocking it down now to put all these houses up around the estate. So, yeah, apparently... What I'm told by the company that have sold me the car is that 
they contacted the family that owned the vehicle and they just don't want anything to do with the car anymore. I'm gonna find try and find out some more information about the car um, because I don't really know. That's all I know. This car is such an unknown, but it's there, it's all there. Obviously we've got no keys. We might be able to get some keys, I'm not sure. The carpet is in the back here. Carpet looks good in the back. Rear seat looks good. Albeit a little moldy. This seat comes forward. Oh, he's got his gloves there. Oh dear. English make. <laughs> gloves but yeah that's all leather trimmed on over the tubs and stuff and uh that rear window does open but we need the key to do that so i haven't got that yet if there's any keys up here or anywhere hidden anything underneath there it's a shame it is a shame but it it also is what it is the floors look really good underneath here. There's no rot coming through or anything like that. The brakes. Uh, accelerator. Oh, clutch moves. Such a small little pedal. Just like golf. This door. Is there a key in there? Again, really nice this side of the car. That's cool. That's really cool. I like that. And uh, what's this? Cassette stereo. Mad. Philips bulb. New old stock bulb. Selling on Facebook Marketplace. 15 grand. I know what I got. Lots of uh, aftermarket switches in here, which is mildly alarming. But we'll see what that's all about. And. Uh, yeah, Ford main dealer, St. Neots, St. Ives, Brampton, Huntingtonshire. This is a Cambridgeshire car since day one, which is lovely because I live in Cambridgeshire and I think that's quite cool that this car stayed in here its entire life. The window is, is working, that's nice. Does the quarter light work? Oh, what a glove. Yeah, the more I look at this car, I'm thinking, wow, that's really good. Headliner. It's like immaculate. Seats are mouldy, but I think they'll clean up really nicely. Genuine spare parts. That looks like the carb gasket. What's this? It's Loctite. <laughs> 70 p. That's probably really expensive. That's cool. New old stock carb gaskets. It's like a little bit of a rebuild kit. Mm. Made by Zenith. I'm impressed. I love this sort of stuff. So cool. Rear view mirror. It's a little suction cup. I'll stick that back on. So I was doing a little bit of research on these cars last night just to get myself up to date and not look like a bit of an idiot during this video. This car was made from 63 to 76. Now, this car was actually produced by the Roots Group. Uh, these cars are actually built right up there, right at the top of the country uh, in Glasgow. And when this was in its prototype era, they were building it to be a great seller. And then the Mini came out and it was like, oh dear, the Mini's come out and the Mini is such a great car, such a good selling car and it does everything. And this car wasn't out yet. So they were like, oh dear, we need to get this car out like now. And like a lot of the early models of this car were rushed and there was problems and people were having issues with the cars, door gaps and stuff like that. So the very early cars were just pretty rubbish. Now, as years went on, they got a little bit better and fixed the issues and drove them everywhere. And these cars were sold like worldwide, um, but not very well. It wasn't a very good seller in comparison to the Mini. And the first couple of years it was okay and then it just started to deteriorate this is a 1966 car and as i'm told it's like probably one of the better cars to have because 
realistically they got their got their marbles together and by the time 66 came they were, they were on it the sales were going down because the the image that the imp already had was already tarnished by the fact that it had all these little problems so in 67 Chrysler took over the company and they were producing them and you know what it's like when another company comes in and tries to profit on a product like this they want to save money make money so the cars had a little update but it ended up just being worse quality cars uh, I'm told they even use like less spot welds and stuff like that they're just not really nice interior etc etc so 66 was like the year a good year to have because they have got on top of all the problems and then it changed hands so yeah this is a 66 so i'm pleased that i got one of these but i'm not trying to give you a history lesson but i find that sort of stuff quite interesting because the the imp we got at home is a, a 69 i do believe and that car has a different dash different interior and you can tell it's like a later model the interior is not as nice and stuff like that but this one it's got all the right bits that i enjoy on a really old car we also have a look under the bonnet now i've got rid of all this stuff on there mirrors on the bonnet you couldn't see that you can see that with all the rubbish on the top of it but now you can this car is going to polish up lovely here we go a lick yeah that'll come out mint mate Ooh. just caught how to open this thing how do i open this thing bear with me oh wow look lens lovely that's cool huh, what's that oh i thought it was the logbook what's this oh look at that bunch of gaskets again champion leads cool lucas new old stock no, that's been used. Still cool. What's the original toolkit? There's something in there. Put that there. Radar. Still tow rope plastic covers. Is that leads? Oh, look. These are ignition leads. No, they're not. It's hard to do this one hand. No, they're not ignition leads. Oh dear. Stanley. What's that little switch there? Switch and oil seals and springs and stuff like that. I love this sort of stuff. This is a heavy box. What's in here? Please be something good. <gasps> wow. This is what I love about finding cars like this. It's even got like the original strap, all the under dashes there, all under the bonnet, like plastic and rubbers are there. Everything is there. What's it like in here? So oh, it smells very caramelized. That's gonna be an issue. If you look here, it's just all brush painted on, so hopefully I can just thin out all these white bits off and leave the little speckled rust underneath it so it looks like that. We're going to polish it. We're going to clean this, put some polish on it, and you're just going to see lots of little brown spots all over it. I love it. I love it. It looks so cool. 
flat out, this car has literally been on my doorstep for many years. Well, before I was born. Obviously, you never see it. So when I heard about it, I had to chase it up and that's how I'm now in ownership of the vehicle. I want to get it back now and get it running. I'd love to go and get it running and I'll do another video. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but there's going to be a series of videos on this car. I want to make it a driver again, clean it up, do a couple of local rush repairs, send it on its way because uh, it deserves it. It's a really cool car, really, really cool car. Let's go. It's off. So that is the imp back at the workshop. Push it off the trailer and then it stops moving. Uh, I've got to put some air in the tyres because, well, we nearly just ripped it off, taking it off. I hope that hasn't ripped it. That might hold air. I'm not sure. We'll see. If it does, I'd be really impressed. That's all four wheels holding air. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Let's see if it rolls now. Oh, beautiful. It's so nice. I can put it in. I'm happy. I'm so happy. This car's done 71,000 miles and in 81, it's probably about 15 years it'd be on the road. So it did about four to 5,000 miles per year, which is quite a lot of miles back then. So this car got used quite a lot and then parked. Right, so I mentioned that the water pump is probably seized. So to get that out of the equation, the belt is coming straight off. So, cool. it's all stuck to the actual pulley. To be honest, that's probably not going to go back on. So, don't worry about that. Water pump. Oh, it does move. That moves. Does this move? The engine's quite stiff. So, before I start, I'm literally just going to put some oil down the bores just because this might be a good engine that just needs a little persuasion. I'm gonna blow the air out around there first. Power RT 1PF, anyway. They look terrible, there's a little bit of rust on there, so it tells me there's a little bit of moisture potentially in there, but. It looks, it looks okay from what I can see. It's quite cool. So this has a, uh, a little hole on the back here. Let's see if it's a crank bolt. That's helpful. 
think they've got the right size. Hopefully. quite uh, locked up. <laughs> ah. So, let's try and get this back on there. That's too big. That is the right size. Let me get a hammer. Right. I don't want to hang off it unless I strip the threads in the crank. Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah. Yes. Do my best Jeremy Clarkson impression. Oh. Right, that's an issue. Set it on fire. I've done this a couple of times when I've flooded engines. Just stick a stick a light down the bore and burn all the fuel that's in there. Fire can't exhaust them. So there's a little bit of fire in that. Obviously, I am a professional, so just have to bear with me and believe me. But introduce a tiny little bit of heat to the balls. What does heat do? Expands. So hopefully, burning all the oil and the brake brake cleaner that's in there heats the cylinder up a little bit and frees it off. So when I did that a minute ago, I did see some flames coming out of the exhaust, which tells me there's like a, a valve stuck open as well. So, hmm, yeah, we don't know. I need one of those cameras so I can look down the ball. Um, it'd be nice to see if there's any issues that had happened to the engine before it was parked, um, which is a possibility. There is no exhaust on it. So uh, I don't know what happened. Um, something might have happened. I don't know. That's why we're here. Woohoo! Bit of heat never hurt no one. It's still a little bit on fire, but I really want to, I really want it to work, so Is 
Is it in gear? I hope not. I don't think it is. But what I did just do was pump the clutch up and it's got a clutch. So, what I'm thinking now is I pull this with the van in gear and hopefully it frees up. We'll see if that's a good idea or not. Right, so this isn't a very ideal situation. Obviously I can see through the back of the van to the bottom arm, tow bar, right? I know the rear balance is off, but I want to be able to see the crank spin. So the jack is on the engine, holding it. It should slide forward when I pull the car forward. But what I want to do is be able to see the crank click into life on video. So less than ideal, but when you work on your own, this is what you gotta do. So hopefully this just goes click and starts turning over. Wish me luck. Right, so what I think's happened <laughs> is I think the clutch might have seized inwards, like it's decompressed. So I put it in gear, pulled it forward, and it's just rolling like it's not in gear. So that's a bit confusing. Not sure why or how that would happen. I haven't actually checked if there's any dry shafts in it. Let me have a look. Let's try that one more time. Right, so this is very weird because I can't seem to get, can't get it to like engage. Yeah, so I put the balance back on. I put it in reverse and I'm about to push it back. I put the balance back on because the jack was underneath it and I'm trying to go backwards. And two, um, I thought if the engine is hanging out a little bit, it might not be engaging gear correctly. So I put it in reverse now. Hopefully I can get it to roll backwards and it engages a gear because it feels like the clutch is just fully depressed so it it's just like putting the clutch in all the time so yeah fingers crossed this works and clicks into life has engaged a gear so that might have just clicked into life that's engaged a gear now I'm going to tell the back I don't know if the engine was turned over or there was some weird noises with the clutch or whatever so do the same again tow it and if that ratchet spins, obviously the engine is spinning and I'll be able to see it on camera. I love working on moon, it's great. It's weird. I think it's all a bit seized up and things are not doing what they should be because I was putting it in gear it wasn't doing anything when I was pulling it forward. And the wheels were spinning, they weren't like locked up. And now I've pushed it back. It's gone into second. Is it second or third? And it's like. It's bouncing off it, so. I'm gonna get the van back again. Do this a couple of times. I think it will break free. Pretty sure the wheels are not locking up. I can't hear it. So, the way I see it is, right, 
This engine is fully aluminium, head and the block. Now I'm assuming the crank isn't aluminium and it's steel. And what two metals don't go well together? Yes, yeah, steel and aluminium, they don't really like each other. That's in my theory, I might be completely wrong there and it's actually got an aluminium crank, but I highly doubt that. Uh, but those two metals don't go well together and they like to seize together. So this is obviously welded itself together. So it just needs to break free and uh, it'll be okay. At this point, we've got nothing to lose. Um, the engine is locked up and we need to try and unlock it. <sighs> I'm doing this on my own is quite annoying. I just wanted to just break free. All the bores are filled with uh, WD-40 and, and oil, just a concoction in there. Um, you should probably put some like diesel in there or something in there, petrol, I don't know. And that might help it, but I'm gonna give it a couple more tugs and see if I can help it that way. Cause that sounds like a better idea. Cause I'm very impatient. Right, take. 655 million and 12. So I just watched that back and realized that the engine is trying to escape. It's quite funny. Um, I'm gonna put that, put that engine mount back in and uh, do it again. Cause I feel like it's not pulling on it. It's still sort of just, you know what I mean? It needs a bit of resistance in there. So bolt that up, try again. It's it. No one has used it for 42 years. Why would that happen to me? Not even my Ed China is going to help me today. There you go. Nice little home for you there, Mr. Imp. Um, the balls have been soaked overnight. Yeah, it's pretty much full with WD-40 and oil. Um, for now, we'll see how we get along with that. I want one of those electric uh, cameras that go down the ball. I can see what's, if there's anything in there that's like catastrophic. Now, I don't believe that it's had a catastrophic failure beforehand. It's got oil in it. Um, I think it's just a case of it's been sat for so long and the engine is locked up. But, um, what I could probably say is let it sink, uh, let it uh, saturate in oil overnight. Let's see if I get any more luck tomorrow. Yeah, just give it a go, really. Um, my mate Matt's going to come give me a hand on Wednesday and we're going to try and clean it. 
uh, and polish it. So hopefully it comes out mint uh, and see what we do with it. I was I was pretty hopeful that that engine would have gone click and would have carried on and we'd all had a great time. <clears throat> but I thought the first thing to do is figure out if it's going to click and go into life before I figure out the situation with the keys and ignition etc etc so first things first get it to turn over if not then let's see where we stand hopefully we can get it to work because uh, to be honest i don't really want to put another engine in it um i have too much to do rather than play with this imp here uh if we can get it to work and turn over it might be okay for running and potentially someone can rebuild it but it's pretty stiff like i didn't want to know but obviously i wouldn't want to move if i'd been sat down for 42 years so that's all it keeps coming back to just gotta give it a little bit of time you know you can't just rush these things even though i'm a very impatient person but i'll probably leave this video here what a cliffhanger if you watch all the way through you're probably gutted um yeah I'll work on it. Uh, there will be more videos on this car. Um, this car eventually will be for sale. So if you want to contact me uh, regards to the vehicle, um, let me know. I'll put them on the screen here where you can contact me and they'll be in the description as well. But uh, it's going to sit in here and I'm going to look at it every day. It looks lovely. I just want to tidy it up a bit and, you know, do it some justice. Be nice to get it going. I know I keep saying that because I'm kind of low key guy now because I've just spent the money on buying the thing and it's not working. But it's the money I pay for it, it's worth it as it is all day long. So this is not a keeper forever. This will be up for sale. So if you're interested, let me know and we can sort of come to a deal or something. But there will be more videos first. So stay tuned and hopefully. I can work on the other barn find, the actual barn find. I can work on that and we can get that moving and everyone could be happy there because that one is going to be a cool thing to film and capture and get out, you know? So yeah, thanks for watching this one. Stay tuned, it's going to happen. Things are going to happen. This car is going to get better in progress during the next couple of weeks. Just let me know how things go. Comment, do all the subscribing stuff because that stuff helps an absolute load. So please do that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.